Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. The last war of humanity is already going on. We are under attack by the enemy against whom we have no weapons. Our enemy has neither soul nor feelings. It does not have a shred of honor or justice. It is cruel and inhumane. It attacks recklessly and mercilessly. It destroys everyone in its way, sparing neither women nor the elderly or children. This human killer of ours is climate. And at this time, when every day the power of the enemy is growing and his attacks become more deadly, we are divided. Because we have been divided into countries, nationalities, races, social, religious, and political factions. We are artificially divided and at the same time brainwashed. We are all aware that we are constantly being zombified. We are forced to hate each other. We are even forced to fight against each other. We are being artificially driven into economic problems and shackled like slaves in the bondage of debt slavery. And this only happens because you and I now live in a consumerist format. As a result, we are destroying each other worse than animals. Look, this is Ukraine, the ruined city of Bucha. Many innocent, peaceful, elderly people, women and children died in it. And we, people, did this. And look, this is the United States, Kentucky, a ruined city in Kentucky. Many innocent civilians died in it as well. But it was climate that did this. Yes, people did it in Bucha. But there is hope that people will stop this bloodshed. That this will end. That people will sit down and negotiate. Any war ends with negotiation and eventually peace. But you can't negotiate with the climate. And it will never stop. My heart aches for the innocent people in Ukraine. They are dying and suffering because someone's stupidity, tyranny, and impunity. The war in Ukraine has shown that whether you are rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Everyone found themselves in the same conditions, in basements, without water or food. But even in this difficult case, people do have a chance. There is a chance that a few will come to an agreement and stop playing the lives of millions. But what about the climate? No one will come to an agreement with the climate. The lives of a divided humanity are in real danger of annihilation. In today's consumerist format, with our inhumaneness, hatred, and greed, we are violating the sacred right 
of every human the right to live. Our society is in death agony at the peak of violence, slavery, and inhumaneness. At the same time, there is an undeclared war aimed at the destruction of all humanity. Our enemy takes no prisoners and has no sympathy for anyone. It is ruthless. Its power and might is increasing every day. Its goal is to destroy all life on this planet and turn our beautiful Earth into a dead planet like Mars. How many more millions of us have to be killed before we are convinced of the inevitability and ruthlessness of the climate? How many more mass graves and sacrifices are needed for us to stop our consumerist madness and selfishness and indifference? How many more of our children, mothers, and loved ones should die before we finally unite and take action? This is the last war of humanity. And if we don't take up this challenge now, tomorrow, the climate will destroy everyone. It will simply wipe all of us off the face of the earth. We are totally unprepared for this war. In the consumerist format, we really have nothing to confront the climate. All we do is wage an information war against the climate. But the climate doesn't even know about that. The climate does not read newspapers. The climate does not watch television. The climate does not use the internet. The climate is impossible to brainwash as we brainwash each other. All this information war is directed by the collaborationists against us, ordinary people, but not against the climate. Who benefits from these lies? Only those the collaborationists on whose orders the corrupt media are brainwashing us. And even in the conditions of war, these tyrants continue to manipulate and profit from us, hoping for their own secure future. However, the climate will destroy not only us, but also them and their offsprings, as well as ours, if we do nothing right now. The enemy destroys us physically and ruins our homes, cities in the blink of an eye. Meanwhile, we listen to the collaborationists and believe them, deceiving ourselves and wasting precious time. Is this not foolish? Is this not stupid? After all, lies and fairy tales in confronting the climate will not help us in any way. The information war against the climate is not a war against the climate, but real collaborationism and betrayal of all humankind. By placing our own selfishness and short-term interest on pedestals of values instead of human life, each of us becomes a collaborationist and an accomplice of our own common enemy. In this consumerist format, 
of society, we are all doomed because we are just at feedstock. We are slaves. Our destinies are controlled by the few who kill us by our own hands. Think about it. Just one man can kill all of humanity simply because we, like stupid sheep, have delegated our power to him and allowed him to make decisions that destroy our lives, the lives of our families. As soon as we delegate power over ourselves to someone, we create a temptation for them to take our lives. That's the way people are. It's in everyone. It's in our blood. We must honestly acknowledge all of our human weaknesses and build a world in which our weaknesses will not be able to affect the lives of other people. We must understand and acknowledge this fact. We must take this into account and henceforth prevent such a situation in society where a few individuals control the lives and destinies of billions of people. We shouldn't hope that those few will someday saturate their greed and become human beings. This is the consumerist format. Power and money is predominant here. They are like black holes that devour entire galaxies. They never have enough. They devour billions. And they never have enough. They take lives. And they never have enough. How is it that we live in a world where one person can take the lives of millions of people at will? It's not normal. Think about it. In the consumerist format, one person, being a tyrant, decides whether millions of people should live or die. While in the creative society, millions of people must decide whether one person should live or die, even if he is potentially dangerous to society. But this is life, human life. Why is this happening to us today? because we allow this to happen. We ourselves have allowed the consumerist format to exist. We are divided. We are manipulated. And we accept it through our silence, inaction, and egocentrism. We keep playing these imposed games like sheep. But we want to be treated like human beings. As long as we remain like sheep, we will be sheared for profit and killed for fun by our own hands. It is mean, despicable, and unacceptable to resolve geopolitical issues at the cost of human lives. I call immediately to stop ambitions, double standards, and killing people. There is no reason to allow anyone to take a human life. I emphasize the life of each of us neither economics nor geopolitics. Nothing can justify people's deaths. 
Yes. We can understand those who defend themselves, but there is no justification for those who kill peaceful, innocent people while defending themselves. That's inhumane. It's no longer a defense. It's already an attack. There is no justification for violence in human society. All violence must be rejected from our society. It's an element of the animal world from which we, as human beings, must get rid of in order to become a true civilization. Otherwise, we have no future. I appeal to everyone, convey this to all, even to those who don't want to hear it. Make them hear it. There's nothing more valuable than human life. You can restore a house, a business, even an entire country. But you cannot restore the life of a human being that was murdered. If we look at the present day world with open eyes, removing the blinders that mass media has imposed on us, it is horrifying how inhumane and heartless we are. Even someone who considers himself to be innocent is a liar because he doesn't care about deaths on another continent. He doesn't care about hunger, violence, and slavery of others because he is brainwashed, egoist. He's a consumer. And such a creature cannot be called a human being. A human is the one who's not indifferent to human grief. We have been turned into weak-willed, greedy, and stupid creatures. Feetstock. Yes, it sounds offensive, but let's face the truth. In a consumer society, how will you resist the climate that is physically destroying us by means of false accusations, by pictures in the media, or false slogans? How will you explain to a zombified egoist idiot that climate's loyalty cannot be bought with money and when the climate comes to kill this person in his own home nothing and no one will save him. How do you explain to the egoist he must act now and inform everyone because this is in his own interest because this is about saving his own life. Only the creative society can save us from the climate by changing conditions, by changing the very format of society. We can all unite together and thus combine all of our resources and our entire human potential in the fight against the climate. You tell me what must happen for you personally to understand and take action. What must convince you? The death of your family and friends your own death, but then you wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Or should all the media on this planet 
get involved and start brainwashing you. Are you not capable of thinking for yourself? Are you incapable of seeing with your own eyes what must happen for you to finally realize that the consumer's format is our common verdict as well as your own grave? We have only two options to avoid the climate apocalypse. The first option, and the most difficult one, is to build the creative society. The second option is to sit idly and do nothing. In other words, just wait for our tyrants to destroy us in a global nuclear war before the climate does it. Tell me. What must happen for people to finally realize that the creative society is the only way out and to start acting and building it? Yes, humanity is now in a deep pit of egocentrism and it won't be possible to jump out of there into the creative society at once. But it is absolutely realistic to take the first steps towards humanist and unification of all of us. We mustn't be silent. We must tell our friends and strangers about this, building the creative society will only become realistic when we accomplish the first and most difficult step in building. That is informing everyone. We should reach the hearts of people for them to understand that it is beneficial to all. Everyone benefits from being human. Everyone benefits from being a united civilization. It is beneficial to each and every one of us because it is the only chance to survive. Yes, it is hard. Yes, they don't want to hear us. But we must do it if we want to survive because we are people. We want to live.